let's talk about how we're going to plan the IP addresses for our workload. The address space for the virtual network should be large enough to accommodate all of the subnets. By that, what we mean really is all of the ent entities that will require an IP address and will allocate an IP address from the subnets, we should consider those. There are four major consideration points in here that we want to keep in mind. The number one is upgrade. When AKS upgrades uh, the nodes, and that can happen on a regular basis, you need to accommodate for um, things like patches and system patches and security features and whatnot. Now, there are a few ways to go about an upgrade, but during an upgrade process, AKS will really create a new node. Uh, it's a temporary node that will host the pods while the upgrade is cordoned and drained. That temporary node is assigned an IP address from the cluster subnet. Now, for the pods, well, you might need additional addresses depending on your strategy. One strategy is to do a rolling update. With a rolling update, you will need to address all the temporary pods that run the workload while the actual pods are being updated. Now, another option would be to do a replacement strategy where with that, the pods that are removed, you can then create, you know, the new ones are created and you really just reuse the IP addresses at that point. So that recycling, if you will, of IP addresses um, is also a strategy. The second topic here is scalability. Now, take into consideration the node count of all system and user nodes and their maximum scalability limit. Uh, by that, really think about how do you want to scale out your cluster. So if we take as an, as an example, while well, we want to scale this out by 400%, you really need four times the number of IP addresses for those scale out nodes. With the strategy and the architecture that we have, we're going to use Azure CNI. With Azure CNI, um, What's happening there is that every pod will have an IP address from the subnet that the cluster um, is deployed. That's different than KubeNet, where really what you have happening there is source netting. Now, there's a benefit of doing Azure CNI, one of which is performance. But the drawback is really this planning and how you should go about that. So scalability is one of those things that most of the times we don't look a lot up front, but you should really put some thought and considerations into this. Uh, again, with this, the way we have this set up, a pod can then talk to another pod in the cluster directly with Azure CNI. Another consideration that we have here is something called Azure Private Link. Now, in a private link, what's going to happen is um, you will be able to access a resource like Azure Container Registry or Key Vault from an IP address that has been allocated directly on that subnet. So why is this important and, and why you should really care? Well, one of the considerations that we've put it in here is that we don't want any public access to those resources if we don't have to. So consider using something like Key Vault. Well, if I can use something like a private link where I have um, a, an IP address in the same subnet as my cluster, um, that would really save me a lot of issues, especially because I don't want traffic to be going out to the internet. Now, with that, I need to consider that I now have resources that I'm carving out. I'm carving out those IP addresses. And for this, since I probably know beforehand what resources those are, this is a little bit easier. So if I'm using Key Vault or an access to a database, I pretty much know beforehand what I'm going to be using for that. The last thing I want to touch base here is that not every IP address in an address space can be used. What I mean by that is, imagine you have a slash 24, um, a you know 192.168.0.0 slash 24, very classic. With that doesn't really mean I can use all the IP addresses. We have documented um, what you can and you cannot use. 
But bear in mind that not every one of those um, IP addresses can be used. Some of them are used by the Azure infrastructure for things like DNS. The architecture is really designed for a single workload. Uh, with that, bear in mind that if you have multiple workloads, one option and strategy that you should consider here is that you might want to really isolate those user workloads. For sure, you want to isolate them from the system node pools, but you also want to isolate them from different user workloads and node pools. Now, a strategy here could be this. Um, a choice could be that you're going to use smaller subnets in size um, that will be attached to these different node pools. Uh, a side effect of this is that your ingress resources might be a little bit more com complex or you might have to use more than one ingress resource to deal with this um, traffic management, traffic engineering. I'll leave the description here of a few of our documentations um, and I highly recommend you take the time and plan for those IP addresses and how you're going to accommodate that in your workload.